to our Pong Positive interview series. I'm Mark Thompson, joined now by truly one of the all-time greats, Tal Leibovitz, who's there in New York City, right at the epicenter of our pandemic here. Tal, let's start right there. I'm hoping everybody is safe and well in the great city of New York. Thank you, Mark. First of all, it's really good to be here. I am super pumped that I get to do the Pong Positive uh, interview. Uh, one thing I do want to say is, and I think it's you that came up with the with the Pong Positive logo. Is well, that not correct? really. Well, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Chad Nasinski. He's our media guy. Um, he did a really good job. He's come up with this whole concept, okay. and so I, I'm just a follower here, Tal. You know that. I'm, okay. I'm a messenger, okay. You know? okay. Yeah. Well, I got to give credit for that. That Pong Positive. I mean, that is gold. Uh, I mean, that is. I, I've been using that with my students, with everybody. So I'm just gonna say that's uh, that's awesome. And well, I can't. Here, Yep. Well, I was just going to say, let me just stop for, for a second, because I can't think of a better moniker, a better logo, a better idea around you than Pong Positive. Of all okay. people I know, okay. putting table tennis and a positive attitude together, you are truly one of the all-time greats, Tall. Definitely have to stay positive. Uh, that's something that I learned, you know, when you have adversity. New York, we're doing okay. Uh, definitely, yeah, we're still on lockdown, so, um, you know, not really going anywhere. You know, I go outside, I do a walking. I've been trying to do walk, you know, doing a lot of walking, competing with some people with this uh, Apple watch. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's been keeping me a little bit busy, um, but uh, we're okay in New York right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I bet. I know, I know New York and I know New Yorkers and they are certainly very tough. You know, Tal, I introduced you as one of the all time greats and I do a little tongue in cheek, but not really because if you look at it in USATT history, you are truly one of the guys. You're a Hall of Famer, number one, uh, five-time Olympian, about to be a sixth-time Olympian, an Olympic gold medalist, won innumerable amount of times on uh, the, the Parapan uh, 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 stage as well. And as a, a Paralympian, you know, one of the guys that, that I think that leads Team USA as we head to Tokyo in 2021. Yeah, I am a six-time Paralympian uh, for the Paralympics. Uh, well, I will be six-time once we get Japan uh, in 2021. I was an Olympic qualifier for doubles uh, one year in 2004. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's awesome to play. With. We have such a great team, and we have really good people. And I think right now our organization is doing really well. And, look, I just have a great time you know, with those, with those guys. Those teammates are awesome. They're unbelievable. Well, you know, you, you correct me, and, and you're right. I mean, I apologize. Paralympian, but, but you are, Tal, one of those players that, that can cross over, that can play both, you know, with the able body table tennis and also the, on the para side as well. I noticed that in Santa Monica at the U.S. Olympic trials recently in February, you were there playing and certainly uh, a guy that competes at the highest label, level of table tennis, period, regardless. Sure. Yeah, I've been able to compete at a very high level. I think one of the challenging things at, you know, competing at the high level, both in Paralympic and, uh, you know, if you want to call it Olympic, uh, you know, uh, competitiveness is, yeah, I think it's, you know, I, I can win some matches, you know, against players, but where I think it's really challenging and where we've seen some really good table tennis players is being able to win like seven, eight matches in a row, right? Because, you know, we all play, we all practice, we enter a tournament, we can beat, you know, two or three people. But, you know, just like this Olympic trials, it's really tough. You know, and for Nikhil even to win that, I mean, you got to really just win all those matches in a row, and that's where it's just super tough. Uh, doesn't happen to me too often. It's happened uh, a couple times, maybe, uh, you know, eight or nine times, but the really good players are able to do it uh, pretty much on demand, you know, and uh, that's pretty impressive. Well, we talk, we talk about your history, and it is long and involved. I mean, we can go back and talk about your start in table tennis or ping pong, you know, as a young person. But really, when you look at your elite level career, it has lasted for a long time. You're, you know, I think you're 43, 44 years of age right now. I don't see you slowing down at all. As a matter of fact, I think you're ranked 10th in the world right now. Table tennis is one of these sports that you can actually continue to play late into life and to play it at an extremely high level. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think with para table tennis, um, it's, um, it's a little different in that, you know, everybody has a physical disability or they have something that's like difficult for them. So I was always able to play like usually in the top four in the world. We have a point mm -hmm. system, so you've got to play a lot of tournaments to really pick up points. But yeah, I'm still playing at a good level, but I think it's also because of my style and I would also say, I mean, two things that really helped me, which I would tell to other players, is one, 
you have to try to believe in your own abilities. You really have mm-hmm. to believe that you can compete. When I'm talking about winning, but just really competing with somebody, and you have to try to make it difficult for people, um, you know, which I have a, a, <laughs> a, a good tendency to do both on and off the court. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things. Well, I think you're, you're the author of Ping Pong for Fighters. So that, that, I don't think there's a, a more apt uh, title for a book for you because really when you talk about fighting, I mean, you know, maybe not physically dropping the gloves and going at it, but uh, you know, this mentality of having a kind of a boxer's mentality going into that ring that you talk about making it difficult on somebody, that's a very effective strategy. I got to tell you, Mark, you've definitely done some research and you've done your homework here uh, in really looking at, uh, you know, the background. And I've, I've watched a lot of these, all of them, all the Palm Positive interviews. I think they're fantastic. I think you're doing a great job. Um, one thing that you may not know uh, that many people don't know too much is when I did play in the Paralympics and I won, I won the gold medal, the first gold, um, you know, really big title that I had won was in 96. Mm. And uh, people probably know I don't have the best mental game. And I actually had the United States was cheering against me, if you can believe that. Oh, I, I, really? I, I might be the only athlete that had my own country uh, cheering against me. And they were cheering for Germany, if you could believe that. Um, mm. But, uh, yeah, so the, the uh, ping pong for fighters, I think, is, you know, definitely has some really good stuff in it. But, uh, yeah, I think the mental you know, is something I work on. And I, I've been doing a lot now as well because we have, you know, stuff with table tennis, which Sean O'Neill and Virginia have been doing amazing at, you know, having this, you know, opportunity for us to work with Bob Swope and, you know, Zoran and some of the really good, good uh, trainers. So I'm really, really excited about that. Probably more than I've ever been, you know, in my career as a player. Well, I got to follow up on how uh, the Americans are cheering against our guy at the Paralympics in Atlanta in 1996. What did you do, Tal, to peeve everybody off? Well, I had I had played one guy had beaten me. I just couldn't beat this guy. He beat me in the team event and he beat me in the uh, in the group. So the guy, he was from Germany. He was a very good player. He was a lot better than me. Uh, one of my teammates had beaten him in the in the team match. Mitch Seidenfeld, how I have no idea. Mm. Um, but I, you know, I just said I had to really just do a little gamesmanship. I started talking to him about, uh, you know, uh, you know Germany. I started me- messing history up. You know, telling him that <laughs> Germany had bombed uh, Pearl Harbor. I mean, I, I I made them all crazy, and then somehow they had gotten the crowd. But it was quite a few people, and I actually enjoyed it. But um, uh, that hasn't That's happened great. to me again, you know, since then. But it was, uh, it was it was an enjoyable experience. Yeah, Tal, you remind me of a hockey player, just straight up tr- trash talking somebody oh. right, right up to the game. You know, you are a true New Yorker. You mentioned a couple of names here that are obviously just absolutely, you know, critical. I think to your development as a player and really some of the great names in USATT. One, Sean O'Neill, a guy I know that you feel near and dear to as far as training and the type of you talk about this mental training. Mitch Seidenfeld, another guy that stands out absolutely. You, you've you've got reached the highest levels of Paralympics and 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 para table tennis, tall, but you don't get there alone. You've had some tremendous support around. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely say that, you know, and I think having, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have been helpful for me. Uh, you know, uh, Sean's been one of the guys that, you know, uh, he's a great coach, great friend. Uh, I mean, he's helped me even, I would say, off the table, studying for my exams that I have to do, pushing me to get through school. Uh, you know, he's a, he's an interesting coach. I mean, you know, I could tell you a bunch of stories. I, I remember we were in, you know, we were in Germany and I, I can't stand the time change. I mean, the time change for me is just, it's just a killer. I just can't take it. I, I got up for one match where it was like eight in the morning that we had this match. It was just a killer for me. And, you know, I go in to play this guy that's better than me. We're in the, uh, in the group. I drew, I drew this really, really tough player. And Sean starts telling me, hey, this guy's so tired because of, you know, the time change. He's like, this guy can't even compete with you. He's just, and he's just telling me how bad the guy is and how tired the guy is. And I'm, he just pumps me up. You know, I end up winning that match. And then years later, I think about it. I'm like, wait a second. That guy was living in <laughs> Europe. He, how is he, he was really talking about time? you. You yeah, were the one who was talking about me. Yeah. I think he was talking about me. And, uh, you know, he's done a lot of stuff like that. He'll tell me in a match, you know, you – you know, uh, we're going to use this as a practice match. I remember I was playing, you know, maybe 15 years ago, the under 2,500 final, and I was just getting killed. I was down 2-0. I didn't have any chance with like a 4-7. He's like, all right, let's just use it as a practice match. 
And he got me worked up. I was like, what are you talking about? Practice much? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't do I, I went all the way practice. to New York here to practice. So he's uh, you like, have a lot. Alvin, <laughs> Alan Iverson there. Practice. <laughs> Forget about that. Yeah. You know, so, that, that, that is awesome. Sean is a great guy. And he really, yeah, you know, you talk about understanding the mental side of the game. He's he's certainly a guy that's going to do it. And and it's certainly a big part of your game as well, Tal. You know, you, you some I think most of us know that you know you you hold a very important role there in New York City. You know, working as a social worker there. You've gone through schooling. You know, you got your master's degree from a New York University, as I understand it. And you know, it's a great step. But you've got to be seeing right now. And you know, I'm obviously not looking for any. Uh, you can't appreciate any confidentiality. But you've got to be seeing right now in New York City. The stresses and the strains of everybody, you know, and I, like we see it in Colorado, people locked out yeah. mountains around us for crying out loud. Now you're, you're right in the middle of this pandemic, and the difficulties I'm assuming associated with the pre- people that are you're working with on a day to day basis have been heightened even in this time. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of crisis. Uh, the work is, I mean, for all of us here, you know, all the therapists, the work is tripled. I mean, you know, I'm working, you know, 10, 12 hours a day easily. Um, and I would say what's really important, uh, you know, in, you know, in this time, in this challenging time is, you know, how people relate to themselves, you know, and how they relate to others. You know, and that's, that's important. You, know, you have to be able to relate to yourself in a good way. You know, you have to be kind of kind to yourself. You have to try to relate to others in a good way. But yeah, it's definitely been a lot of, a lot of crisis in New York and there's been, you know, a lot of, a lot of challenges for sure. Yeah. Well, I can't think of a better person to kind of be able to handle those questions, you know, understanding your experience. And we talk about table tennis and the impact it has on people. And I know that you're one of those people that table tennis really has had a huge impact. You think about what you've gone through in your life and how the opportunities that have been presented to you. And I know that it's been uh, it, it, your work ethic your attitude, your approach has all brought you to that spot. But the sport of table tennis, you know, you hate to say it, it was really, really been good to Tal Leibovitz. Yeah, I mean, this sport changed my life. You know, I mean, I started at the South Queens Boys and Girls Club. You know, I was homeless for a long period of time for, you know, seven or eight years. I was living on a train. You know, I had some, you know, some challenges. So, you know, it was every day was a grind. Um, but, yeah, without table tennis, yeah, I really don't know where I would be. And that's the, that's the truth. Table tennis helped me a lot. And I think one thing that I really learned, which I wish I would have known back then, and I'm starting to learn a little bit today, is that, you know, I used to de- define my, my value as a person through sort of table tennis, you know, sort of winning these things. And I sort of realized, look, we're all human beings. And, and that, you know, in a sense, that can be a drive for some people. But, uh, you know, if we lose matches, you know, we're still here, right? We're still doing the best we can. Table tennis is not bigger than life. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a great sport. And I think we have to keep, you know, a little bit of perspective. I think that's that's definitely helpful. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a great attitude, and I, I'm sure that it, it's reflected in your play as well. We've already talked about the fact that you've already qualified as a U.S. Paralympian coming up for Tokyo. It's going to be in, in 2021, obviously. It gives you a, kind of a full year to prepare for what's going on there. How you got there is a pretty good story in and of itself. You know, with, uh, playing in the Parapan down in Lima, Peru, and it looked like in the gold medal finals that you, you're back. Here we go again. Tal Leibovitz back against the wall, down two games to one against a very good player. And somehow we're able to come back and win that match, win the gold medal and, and earn that spot on the Paralympian team. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. The player that I played is really good. I played him in 2015 and I was down 5-1 or 5-2 in the last game. And I just felt, you know, I, the match was getting away from me. And in that match, I told myself, is it OK? You know, you're a therapist. You have a really good career. It's okay. You lose this match. You can't go to the Paralympics. It's fine. And I was able to reduce pressure that way. um, And that was really helpful. In this period, I was a little out of shape because I really was battling a lot of injuries for the last year, Mm -hmm. nerve damage, and I needed to do more physical therapy. And, you know, when I was down, uh, even through the whole match, I just felt the guy was better than me. So I just said, you know, I'm playing somebody and, you know, I just, you know, this guy's just like playing so much better than me. But I was like, "I, I have to just try to hang out with this guy and try to battle this guy. And that's sort of what I was thinking about, you know, even down 10-9, I was like, I got to battle this guy. And the serve was kind of lucky. I was going to serve backhand, but I was practicing this topspin serve just for fun that one of my friends showed me, believe it or not, 25 years ago, make really heavy <laughs> topspin. I could never do it. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to try this. Perfect uh, time serve. to pull that <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I said, you know what? And I hadn't even really landed. And I was like, because it's really heavy top. It looks like underspin. And for some reason, it just connected well. Uh, maybe it was the uh, Yola, my Yola racket. Maybe it was the Yola rubbers. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, Who knows? 
he had a riser uh, 43. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, it just connected. I don't know what happened. He cut it from under the ball. It went out and ended up winning it. And then, you know, unfortunately for him, you know, he was crying after the match. He was on the floor. And, mm. and you know, you know, it sucks that, you know, it, it's like in this game, you know, when one of us does well, the other person sort of has to not do well. You know, I, I'm hoping he qualifies and, you know, he's a great player. Yeah. You know, he's top, you know, top 20 in the world. And uh, he's just, you know, he's, he's just tough and he's got, he's got long pips on the back end, but he changes so fast. And I, I'm not used to that style. He just changes mm. his hand so quickly. I can't tell. So he's either punching or looping. It's just such a strange style. Yeah. And uh, he's tough. He's tough. Yeah, he's tough, tough player. Great player. Well, Great player. Well, Tal, obviously, this is, you know, the whole theme here is Pong positive. And I, I have to say, you know, obviously, I was there in Santa Monica for the U.S. Olympic trials and was uh, able to see you kind of, uh, I think, at your best in a way. There was uh, a youngster there who had, uh, had, had probably had very limited experience, maybe never had picked up a, a ping pong paddle in his life. And uh, I, I watched you kind of interact with that youngster there in Santa Monica, Santa Monica College. And, and I saw you, I, and I thought what was really your best was interacting with somebody, teaching them the sport, doing it in a way that was, you know, appropriate, kind. Uh, it, it, was, it was direct. It was, it was good advice. It was athletic advice. But there was something about your demeanor that uh, I don't know what's gonna, uh, what the future holds for you here, but certainly being a teacher in table tennis, being a mentor to young people is certainly a big part of who you are. Sure. You know, Mark, you know, when I was coming up, uh, you know, I played, you know, I played at the boys club and I tried to play these intermediate players in a place called Lost Battalion Hall. So they were probably rated like 2100 to 2300. I might have been 1600 at the time at that time. And I was I had to actually sit and wait three or four hours to play a match. So nobody would play with me for a long time. And it was so it was, I did it for about a year and a half. I never forgot that. But, you know, for me in table tennis, you know, I'm at a decent level, but I'll, you know, I play with anybody, you know, I, I, you know I'll definitely practice with anybody, you know, I'm open to help people, um, no problem, uh, because I know people love the sport, they want to get better, we are, we're playing table tennis because we love this game, there's really no other reason, right, we love it, we have a great time doing it, uh, it's not like we're making millions of dollars from it, and, you know, and, and the other thing that I'll say with all these players that are playing, I see a lot of players even, you know, if you want to use ratings, 1,900, 1,200, 1,500, 2,200, they all have great things and great, great parts of their game. But it's just a matter of putting things together. And I think now we have a lot of um, – we definitely have a lot of resources. I know USA Table Tennis is doing some kind of coaching thing they had contacted me about, mm -hmm. some, some online stuff. I think that's going to be really great where you can have anybody – you know, it doesn't matter where they are in the country – but they can get great coaching now. So I think that's going to be a huge opportunity for people. Well, Tal Leibovitz, you've really put it all together. I want to thank you very much for being part of the Pong Positive interview series. I want to wish you the best going forward here, particularly there in New York City. I know we're going to get through all of this, but by the same token, thank you for all you do day in and day out in that great city. Well, thank you, Mark. And I do have to say the final thing I'll say is you are an unbelievable interview and you have really good energy <laughs> in the interview. So I'm watching it and you were just, you know, keep it going. Uh, you know, it's like Howard Stern. You watch him. He's you know, not the best, but he does do his research on on the people he's interviewing. And, and you've clearly done some great research. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much for taking the uh, time. And thank you for the opportunity where, where uh, you know, we get to speak in, in this uh, in this platform. Well, thank you very much, Saul. It's a great compliment. Uh, take it easy there, man. We'll talk to you. Okay. All right. Be All well. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.